Hi, welcome to another video in my series on expressing inverse hyperbolic functions in terms of natural logarithms. And in this video, I want to show you how we can express y equals the inverse cosh of x as a natural logarithm. So we start with the equation here, and rearranging this, we therefore have that x would equal cosh of y. Now, by definition, cosh of y is equal to e to the power y then, plus e to the power minus y, and this is all divided by 2. And what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 2, and so therefore we get 2x equals e to the power y plus e to the power minus y. And e to the power minus y is 1 over y, so I don't want that fraction, so I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the power y now. So we therefore have 2x e to the power y equals e to the power y times another e to the power y, which I could write as e to the power 2y, but I'm going to write it as e to the power y all squared. And then e to the minus y times e to the power y, that's going to be 1. So I've got a quadratic here, and I need to rearrange it, make it equal to 0. So we'll subtract 2x e to the y from both sides. So we therefore have e to the power y all squared okay, minus 2x e to the power y plus the 1 equals 0. Now I'm going to need to use the quadratic formula to solve this. So we'd have e to the y equals, and if we take a as 1, b as minus 2x and c as 1, we get e to the y then equals minus b, so that's going to be 2x, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which will be minus 2x all squared, which will lead to 4x squared. Then minus 4 times a times c, so it's just going to be minus 4, and that's divided all by 2. And then what I could do is, say, factorise the bit inside the square root there. So we'd therefore have e to the y equals 2x plus or minus the square root then of 4 bracket x squared minus 1. And that will be all divided by 2. And I can see that the 2's cancel now, because the square root of 4 there is going to be 2. So we can take those 2's out. Okay, so what we're left with then is therefore e to the y would be equal to x plus or minus the root then of x squared minus 1. Okay, so let's just border that off. And we've got e to the y then equals this. So I could take the natural log to both sides. And if I do that, we end up with y equaling the natural log then of x plus or minus the root of x squared minus 1. Now, we've got two possibilities here, plus or minus the root of x squared minus 1. Both are, in fact, possible solutions then. But knowing that the graph of the inverse cosh of x is single-valued, in other words, it looks like this, that for any x there's just one value of y, and for any value of y there's just one value of x, then it turns out that what we need is to take the positive value here. I'll show you what happens when we take the negative value, okay, as well as we progress through the tutorial. But for the moment, it's going to be this branch here, which is given by the positive value. And since y is equal to the inverse cosh of x, we've therefore got that the inverse cosh of x must be equal to the natural log of x plus 
the positive root of x squared minus 1. And this is valid for x greater than or equal to 1. So we'll just put here for x greater than or equal to 1. Now I'd certainly encourage you to learn this. If you don't, um, then certainly be able to learn how to prove it. We're going to need this at times when it comes to solving equations. Now, I'd just like to take a particular value. Let's suppose we look at when x is 4 here. Suppose we were asked to work out the value of the inverse cosh of 4. Then you can see that what this gives us by the formula here is the natural log of 4 plus the square root of 4 squared, which is 16, minus 1, that's 15, the root of 15. And this turns out to be equal to 2.06 and so on. And that would correspond to this value here. So you can see the positive value is giving us values in the top here. You could try it on your calculator with the negative value. And you'd find that you get minus 2.06. And this corresponds to a reflection of this curve in the x-axis. So taking the negative value gives you this curve down here. And I'll just mark that in as this part here is y equals the natural log then of x minus the square root then of x squared minus 1. Now, I did say I'd like to show you why this is so. So we'll just mark that in there, OK? And we'll border this off. And we'll work our way through this point here. OK, so let's suppose we take the positive value of this bracket and multiply it by the negative value in that bracket. So we've got x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And multiply this with x minus the square root of x squared minus 1. And what we've got here is the difference of two squares. Expanding this just gives us x times x, which is x squared. And then we'll end up with the root of x squared minus 1, all squared. So that's going to be minus there just simply x squared minus 1. Difference of two squares then, giving us this result. And if we clean this up, we end up with it coming out as 1. So if I make x minus root x squared minus 1 the subject, let's just put it in here, x minus the root of x squared minus 1, then this is going to be identical to 1 divided by x plus the root of x squared minus 1. So put that in there, 1 divided by x plus the root of x squared minus 1. Now when it comes to looking at the natural log of this, if we take natural logs of both sides, we therefore have the natural log of x minus the root of x squared minus 1. OK, turns out to be the natural log of 1, which is 0, minus the natural log of the denominator here. So we end up with this being identical to minus the natural log of x plus the root of x squared minus 1. And this is a reflection then of the top part of this graph in the x-axis. Now I did say that both these solutions were possible, but only the positive one is suitable when we're looking at this single valued function for the inverse cosh of x. But I'll show you why we need both these values here for plus or minus in this example here. Suppose we had to solve, for instance, cosh of, say, x equaling 2. 
Now, if we were to look at the graph of y equals cosh x, remember it looks something like this. And so therefore, there's going to be two values of x where we get 2. Because you can see, if I take 2 here, you're going to get 1 across here, down here. Let's mark it in. You'll have 1 then from here down to here, and 1 across down to there. Okay, just looks like just a little bit more than 1 and a bit less than minus 1 there. Two values, and we can get that just by taking the inverse cosh of both sides here. If we do, we end up with x equaling, and taking the formula here, it would be the natural log of 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 1. And if you work this out in your calculator, you find that you get plus or minus 1.316 and so on. And that would agree with what we've got here. So, as I say, it is important to realise the difference then between taking the positive value here, which defines this single valued function, and being able to use this particular result when it comes to solving, say, an equation like this. So I hope that's clear. Quite a tricky idea, but uh, there we go. That's uh, how we derive, anyway, the inverse cosh of x as a natural logarithm.